been five years. Yeah. Looking back on it, what are kind of your thoughts over the whole thing? Uh, time flies. So when you look back at it, you really can't talk about fuel until you've talked about envy. Uh, so where did it begin in Overwatch? Yeah, I just remember seeing Activision Blizzard announce the game for the first time and it being just so incredible. I saw the game at BlizzCon and, uh, you know, it was obviously a super hype game coming from Activision Blizzard. Like, I mean, as soon as we saw it, um, I was, you know, pretty much hooked right away. And I knew it was probably a game that we were gonna want to participate in. And so as soon as the game became playable, we immediately started looking for teams and players. We ended up signing what effectively was a North American team pretty early on, and they were great players, uh, really solid roster. GG, Envious takes it. Well played the Envious, they're gonna take home $360. What a series, Hex. And right from the get-go, we were there supporting Overwatch Esports. It was really interesting because they had made this like whole roster swap from the early stages with like Kuma and, and the old Envy into the IDDQD roster. We had the potential to kind of change our roster just a little bit. Basically, we had this opportunity where we had Tailspin and this team, IDDQD, who was looking for a sixth player at the time. We kind of needed a sixth player. Like, we had a good winning run and we weren't really like short on players, but it was still hard to find somebody who wanted to play with us. And so we started talking to the IDDQD team and it definitely was a fit where Tailspin could join this team. But one of our important requirements was that we had a team house and we wanted to have our team living here with us. Then Mike's like, oh yeah, I'll make a decent offer for you guys. You're the best team in the world. So uh, how about you guys come here? We we're like, yeah, hell yeah, we'll go. I just kind of merged, we took Tail in and Hashtra took us in and that's history, you know? So when the, the guys first came to the house, and it was interesting for me because seeing all the rest of them show up, you know, you got German, you got Spaniard, you got people from all, all over the place. It was so funny to, to meet them all. They're all goofy kids. And it was cool because they all kind of just instantly knew each other, right? Because yeah, they'd talk to each other online, but this is the first time they're all together in one space. That moment was a real big defining moment for us because what ended up happening was that team got put together, they came over to the States and we dominated Overwatch Esports for a couple of years with that team. And they started crushing it from day one. Now officially over, ladies and gentlemen, we can say it concretely now, Envious is your grand champion. We went on this insane win streak. I think we had won like 85 straight matches without losing. It was a team that was just dominant. Like they just showed up and started just beating everyone. It was just win WWW all on the call. Back then it was like insane. Like nobody had done that in esports except maybe NIP and CSGO. Why we were so good at the very start was because we took it way more seriously than other people did. We played an insane amount. That's why really like, it was really easy playing with other teams. They wouldn't do it. So we just, we just dominated it. I think we were pretty far ahead of most of the big organizations at the time. I feel like we we helped build a lot of buzz for, for the ecosystem. I think it was just such a special team because they were all just kind of coming from kind of nowhere, right? It's just a group of guys that just like dedicated their lives playing a game that they didn't know would succeed or not, right? And ever since they came here, you could tell how, how much it meant to them to the practice every day and work really hard in order to just to you know, make Envy proud. Our team had been kind of all working together, living together, but then we got this news that we got invited to this huge Korean league that was supposed to be broadcast on Korean television. And we all decided as a team to go and participate in it. It was pretty magical flying to Korea for the first time. It was amazing because Korea, it's like the home of esports. I've always liked Korean players. I've always watched like StarCraft when I was a kid. That was like the goal of like, I want to be like those big stars in Korea, you know, playing like in front of a big crowd. That was like the whole reason I was there, like at all playing video games. It was kind of a dream for all of us. You know, I'd always wanted to go to Korea personally and it made me super happy that I was able to go with these group of guys. Obviously, when we first got there, I mean, I'd never been to Korea. I was managing these guys, you know, trying to get them all situated. You're living in a hotel, playing the game. It was so cool. 
like everything was going pretty well like everything was okay but then at some point we had a break in apex because world cup came in i'm pretty sure we were the only team that had all of our players in the world cup everybody had their team in there everybody had their like were repping their nationality it was pretty cool but then suddenly tells like oh i don't want to go back to korea and we're like Shit. we need a new player right now we were worried because obviously not having tailspin like you're, you're losing a piece of your core that was very important so going into it, it's like are we just screwed you know this is going into playoffs you know we're about to play rogue you know our biggest rivals at the time they look really good we're like panicking like oh what the hell are we gonna do we have like a few options but the only real option was mickey i went to the overwatch world cup 2016. i don't know what's the reason that hawk came to me and asked me like do you have any contact like skype or anything i still remember to this day the call we made with mike and hulk talking about mickey and we're just gonna get him from the world cup and he looked good and like it was such an interesting find three weeks later he messaged me and he asked me that do you interest to be a standing and, and compete the tournament in korea i didn't watch the top team overwatch player playing so i didn't know in this but my teammates in Thailand, they told me that Envious is one of the best team back then in the world. So if I could join the team, it would be a miracle. It was, it was really exciting. I remember I had to meet him at the hotel lobby from the airport and I did not know what to expect. When I get in the hotel and in the scream room, I met everyone. First thing is, all right, this is such a nightmare because I couldn't communicate with anyone. And then Mickey comes in, talks, barely barely no english and we're like F we're like oh man this this is not gonna work we don't have much time with mickey and then we had to play so i think it, it is about four days and uh, the first three days of screen before the match was really really bad like really bad i think everyone just mad mad at hawk that's why why are you picking mickey for what they lost tailspin which is a dps player but then picking me up, I'm not a DPS player. I don't know why. So everything just makes it. It's so bad. There was no hope at all. And then the last day before match, I tried D.Va. We hit a lucky break where the meta changed, right? They they did a massive patch where they, they buffed D.Va and D.Va was crazy. I was like, man, that's really strong. We should play that. So we're like, Mickey, you play D.Va. D.Va's easy. You just press shift and go. Mickey, Mickey, go, go. That's where we got it. Mickey couldn't really understand English much. So we just had to give him like really basic instructions. Like Coco would do this all the time. He would say, Mickey, Mickey, go, go. If I heard Mickey, go, go, you saw. It would just fly in. Oh, uh, Reinforce tries to push right Mickey, but Mickey gets four. He gets four with the self-destruct. Oh, my oh the Diva delivery. It's so weird that it actually worked. I don't know how, how did we make it? I, I have no idea how did we make it. I, 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 I did nothing. I actually did nothing. But then the caster just keeps saying, Mickey, what, how, how you do it? How? Not used yet, Nox doesn't have it. Mickey oh, gets Mickey, another, another three. Huge. Are you kidding me? How does he do it? How does he do it with this diva? Uh, every time when, when you when you guys saw the diva bomb, it's, it's not me, it's Coco. The guy was the one that made me famous. That's confirmed. <laughs> Losing everyone, there's a payload! And Envious, they will win this match and go to the semifinals. Are you kidding me? For sure, we got lucky. But honestly, like, we were just better at adapting to things than other teams. Like, we were just way faster. It worked because nobody else was, like, ready for it. It was like a Cinderella story or something. It was insane, the run we had and the way we just kind of owned the meta at the time and just kind of took it all home. We're just, we're just having fun. We knew we were going to win, kind of. We were like really confident going in and that's why we won the whole thing. It was pretty damn fast, you know? Like they had no chance. And that is it. Envious will win Intel Overwatch Apex Season 1 with a 4-0 victory. GG. Wow. Like we'd won before in Envy, but like that win was huge. I mean, winning on Korean soil, like, I mean, that is something that still to this day hasn't really been achieved by any other organization. Against all odds, we won the tournament, we won the whole league. It was just mind boggling when that happened because it was like one of the most surreal moments. Seeing time we run down that big stage was awesome, man.
The only thing I really remember was like, we need to get the trophy like fast, right? I'm like looking back, nobody's coming. I'm like, Shit, well, I'm already running. I can't stop now. <laughs> okay, everybody started running and then Coco's going like really slow. <laughs> Wait, I, I actually lift him up and he, and, and, and he was scared. <laughs> Mickey tried to lift me, I'm too fat, so he couldn't. <laughs> when we actually won, like even though the finals wasn't that hard, it still felt like super magical. Doing something like that is not easy. Knowing that we had gone through so many tough teams like Rogue and Hong Du, like it was an immense win. I mean, you couldn't ask for anything better. I just can't even explain how, how proud I was about those guys. They had worked so hard. And to see Mickey get MVP at that whole event, it was just amazing. I think the moment that we complete the Apex tournament in Korea, that was the best moment in my life. No, no, no second thought, for sure. Like everybody was like hyped as hell. Like everybody was like, damn, this is the biggest thing we're ever gonna do in our lives, ever. <laughs> it's like this one of the most iconic moments in Overwatch esports history. And I think that was really a moment where we created memories for a lot of people. And I think that cemented us as you know, one of the premier esports organizations in the world. So after that victory, you know, we followed it up with MLG Vegas. You know, we had a couple more stints in Korea as well. Had some good success there again. We made some adjustments, added some new faces to our roster with like Seagull and Effect and all these guys. This team is electric. These guys were winning pretty much everything. Top team in the world. We had clearly been the staple brand, you know, the most popular and successful Western team in Overwatch Esports for quite some time. And then we learned that Activision Blizzard was going to create this new kind of franchise league. And when we first heard about the Overwatch League, it was like music to my ears because that was my dream. That was my vision. I wanted to have Envy, you know, in a place where people were coming to watch us play and we were providing an awesome experience. I was just like, I have to get this done. We were all in. You know, we had to create a new brand, right? And they wanted us to create something unique to the Overwatch League. It's exciting, you know, get a new logo, new branding, all these really cool things. It's so much fun. I mean, it was so different. There was a whole process of brand creation and ideation, and we had to kind of figure out where we would land. And, you know, having committed to bringing the team to Dallas, the Texas theme around energy and oil and gas production in the energy industry brought the idea of the fuel brand, right? We thought that that was kind of a, a cool brand to go with, and we ran with it. I thought it was like really cool, you know, like we're, where the Dallas fuel, where like everything was so cool. Like we were like on top of the world. Some of the things that were happening around the scene were was just so positive. You know, getting to go out to Los Angeles and go to the Blizzard Arena and watch our games live with a with an audience in the studio. You had this massive LED screen that was just a huge like setup. It was really exciting just to to see everybody in their new jerseys. You have all these different teams from all these different cities, and it was just such a cool concept and seeing kind of the level of commitment that Activision Blizzard was making to this esport was it was incredible.